unbadding, unbadding, we're unbadding, baby. Unbadding. We're on a journey, baby. Unbadding. We're unbadding, baby. Unbadding. We're unbadding. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unbadding. I'm Jessica Presley. And I'm Dana Pereira. Dana, I am checking out the drink that you brought for us today. What do we have this week? You know, I was trying to go for a different brand of something, but instead I realized we did not try all of the flavors of our famed Katy Perry's De Soi. We did not try it. I need a tiebreaker because the first one that I tried... Not my fave. Didn't like it. Wanted to gag. I don't think I told the interwebs about that, Mm, but the mm -hmm. Champagne Dreams one. Was that like the greenish can? It's like a gold can. Uh, I think I did try that one also. Did you? What did you think? Um, Very earthy. Very earthy. Gingery Mm -hmm. in a way. Was not my favorite. Yeah. See, I thought maybe you might like it a little more than me because you are a... um, like whiskey uh, bourbon fan right and I am not at all so I was like ah I wonder maybe if this is like geared more towards whiskey bourbon lovers Mm -mm. no you weren't on board either I tried (laughs) you know I even like give it the effort of like doctoring it up a bit add like a little citrus add a little sweetener add a little ginger or something and that one really It resisted all of my tricks. Yes. Yeah. Not my fave. (laughs) Sorry, Katy Perry. Love you. Hate your champagne dreams. But what was the pink one that we tried? That one was really good. Yeah. Yeah. The rosé one. Yes. That one. Trace rosé. Trace rosé. Which was, what's this one called? Um, De Soie. Oh, Purple Loon. Purple Loon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Made with ashwagandha. Tart cherry L-theanine derived from green tea. Man, I am impressed with all of the things you just said. Why? Because I have such a good uh, pronunciation. I would have tripped over every (laughs) single one of those words. So, you know, on screen, it actually kind of looks like we're drinking red wine. But to the naked eye, it's like a little more like brown kind of in color. It almost looks like a root beer of sorts. Yeah. it's All right. Cheers. Cheerio. All right. Tell me what you think. Okay. Is it going to pass Ooh, the okay. taste test? I do smell the cherries. Oh, yeah. It mm-hmm. really does smell a lot like cherry. Very tart. What's the initial reaction? Not not terrible. I also agree, not terrible. It's not my favorite, but I'm not like, I don't want to gag. I actually quite enjoy it it definitely has a lot of tart cherry it has a tart flavor to it um but it's see i like the ones that are tart enough that like it doesn't make me want to drink them super fast because otherwise to me it's like a soda or something and i just want to chug it i think my expectations are like i want something that tastes like alcohol that's not alcohol Mm -hmm. and this is kind of like um Almost a mix. It's not straight juice, but it yeah. is almost a little juicy. Yeah, it is a little bit. Ju- like, you know, if you ever get like cranberry juice yeah. and it's like kind of tart in that way. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, uh, not like the, the ocean spray, but like the real stuff you get in the glass jar. That's super tart. <laughs> yeah. So it's good. I do like it. Um, it does look like wine it's a total Monet. You have to be far away to make it look <laughs> yeah, like you, wine. It Otherwise, it kind of looks like mud water. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> looks like mud. It looks like somebody stomped on grapes and then put it in a glass. Yeah. Um, which also, I'm totally happy to drink. But overall, um, I would give it, I'm, I'm going seven out of 10. I was solid seven as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at us go. I know. Same Z's. Yeah. I mean, Maybe it's winning awards. Maybe it's not. Have you heard about the whole Barbie controversy? I have not heard. Please do enlighten me. This is going to upset you. It upset me. Darn it. So uh, the Oscar nominations have come out. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> Barbie was the biggest movie of the year. Yep. Broke box office records. Okay. Um, Barbie herself, Margot Robbie, not nominated Interesting. for an Oscar. However, Ken... Ken was, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Ryan Gosling was nominated for an Oscar. Is and that just like the most mind fuck, like misogyny bullshit that like was completely tied into Barbie? It theme is Barbie as a whole? played out <laughs> yeah. in fucking real life. <laughs> totally. Also, <laughs> Greta Gerwig, not nominated for an oscar she mm -hmm. is the director of barbie right the award-winning record-breaking um not nominated for an oscar barbie itself i believe was i think america ferrera was nominated okay. also um ken was nominated not barbie it's in my eyes complete fucking bullshit all right what's triggered in there what is bullshit? Call it. What is bullshit is that the whole movie is fucking Barbie. And I'll say it in Ryan Gosling's words because he put out a statement. Ooh, juicy. And I agree with it. Without Barbie, there is no Ken. Thank you, Mr. Gosling. Why does he always show up in all of the most dreamy ways? He's fucking dreamy as shit. He is. He really just knows how to... Make it all happen. <laughs> he really, and, and it might be a problem. <laughs> he just fucking gets it every time. He does. I he know. nails it. And I think that his uh, partner, I don't know if they're wife and husband, but we'll go partner because I think that's an appropriate term. Um, Eva Mendez mm -hmm. is a part of that because she's a fucking strong ass woman that has a latina background and has had to like fight up the ranks her entire life and mm -hmm. i think that he's a very supportive person of her and of women he has two daughters i hope he is at least i'm you know definitely just speaking from my hopes and dreams <laughs> <I know. laughs> and not what is actuality however he has shown through his statements um that he's like this is bullshit why the fuck was margot robbie snubbed for an oscar right and so any uh anybody supporting that she didn't get an Oscar nomination? Not that I saw. Okay. However, I am just going to be real upfront. I am probably on an algorithm that does not show <laughs> me the rest of it. That's true. Nor have you sought it out. No, because I mean, fuck that. She deserved the Oscar nom. She made the movie. Absolutely. And how can, I mean, no offense, Ryan Gosling, because I am a fan of yours. Yeah. But how does he get the nom without her? I just... <sighs> It's it just rough. feels like a little yucky. It is yucky. Mm -hmm. It's super yucky. Yeah. I don't like it at all. Tis the world that we live in. Tis the world that we are trying to change. Well, I guess the change won't come without bringing all of the ick to the front first. Well, so listen, they got some unbatting to do over there at the Academy. Okay. They sure do. <laughs> They sure do. Give it a listen, okay, folks? Give it a listen. Yeah. Somebody tag someone over at the Academy. <laughs> Fran Drescher. <laughs> is she in the Academy? Couldn't tell you. I think so. <laughs> you know, that is not my forte. I never know. Anytime you bring up a reference of anybody famous, I'm like, can I get a picture, please? I don't know who the fuck you're talking about. That is true. You do have some learning to do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Even my eight-year-old daughter just trumps me in every way shape and form when it comes to actors actresses and musicians you know i'd like to say that i wasn't judging but you were um i mean a little no i'm not it's interesting because i'm like well we're on a podcast maybe you should like google some things every now and again i think it's part of my charm <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't know. 
it's, it does Jess live under a rock? Not entirely. No, not entirely. But when it comes to... But often. If Margot Robbie got an Oscar nod, yes, she does. Mm-hmm. So, so, so far under the rock. And that's okay. Yeah. And yeah. still love me. We're accepting. Thank you. We're embracing. Thank you. <laughs> so, speaking of judgment... Oh, funny you should bring that up. It's like it's our topic or it's something. It's almost like. like it's this week's episode. Oh, is it really? I had no idea. I did no preparation for this. Zero. It just kind of falls right out of our mouths. Yeah. I do like how we try and get there, though. I know. We, we do, do it every time. Solid effort every week. <laughs> <laughs> We're never like, so, all right, fellow on baddies, this mm-hmm. week's topic is... No. Judgment. We never roll it out that way. It's always like a, a we little totally segue. We totally could, though. We could. <laughs> it, <laughs> it would be not be so that hard. Easy to just be like, hey, guys, the topic this week is, and then to go into it. But we like to make things hard on ourselves. Mm-hmm. So. We're always trying to be so witty. Oh, we just... segue right into it. All right. Don't judge us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See what I did there? I did. You see? <laughs> I might not know who Margot Robbie Robbie is, but I can segue like no other. You do know who she is. You did watch her in a movie. Yeah, I just have to see a picture. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk about judgment. Let's talk about being judgmental, motherfuckers. We are all so judgy. So judgy. I know. And why... Are people so judgy? It's just a part of being human. I think that's an important thing to recognize right off the bat. Right. Right from the get-go. We are all human, judgy as fuck. We are. But that judgy, judgy person inside of us really comes from like the yuckiest parts of ourselves, I think. Sometimes, yeah. Because we just want to know like, are we good? Are we better than? Are they better than us? Like, it's always this comparative nature as far as like, you know, where do I land in the hierarchy of, I don't know, like placement or um, or moral compass or. I feel like you just hit something right on the head is where do I land in the hierarchy? Us as people, we've always separated into different classes, right? Mm -hmm. You got the fucking peasants and then you got the middle class and then you have royals and then you have, I don't know, aliens. But there's always like a a like classism sure. that goes along with it. And with that, instead of being like, wow, these were the hands that people were dealt, there's judgment behind it. Like, right. oh, you could have worked harder. You could have done better. You could have married up. You could have right. done all of these things. Right. Yeah. It's so easy for somebody to say, um, Like, for instance, somebody that will kind of ebb and flow with life, the Mm -hmm. person who has scratched and clawed their way to the top is so easy to look at that person and say, like, you're lazy. You don't work hard enough. But it's all judgment. From what I'm realizing, judgment is all based on where you stand and what your experience is. And pretty much the way that you judge yourself it's based on your own moral measuring stick of sorts uh i remember and i've talked about this before but being a single mother and having to go on food stamps Mm. i put myself in at such a disadvantage for so many years because I refused food food stamps. You didn't use them. I refused WIC. I refused every government assistance that could possibly help with myself as a single mother and my two children. Why? Because of the judgment. Self-judgment. No, because of the judgment from other people. Because of the way that I perceived 
other people that were on, they were lazy. They didn't work hard enough. They weren't doing good enough. They weren't putting in the time. They weren't putting in the effort. And, um, so for me, I was like, I'm going to live paycheck to paycheck and I'm going to barely scrape by. And then whenever I finally gave in and got myself on food stamps and was able to take that two, three hundred dollars, whatever it was, off my plate every month. Holy shit, what a relief. Oh my gosh. It was, I mean, because, and another thing that goes in with judgment, it was my environment growing up. There's a lot of people that are like, I mean, like I just said, you don't work hard enough. You're not doing enough. You're just being lazy. You're working the system. So you had a preconceived judgment about people who were on food stamps already, which totally, which did not allow you to give yourself permission to go on food stamps. So then you turned the judgment of your environment into the judgment on yourself, which then made your own life harder. hundred percent. Wow. That and it is was so hard. Hard as shit. I made my life so much harder on myself by not allowing myself to do something that it like government assistance was there for people like me. Right. For the people that, you know, or I, I had the full time job. And I not that that fucking matters. I don't want to go into all that. But I had this judgment in my head that um, I didn't need it. I wasn't that person. And instead, I hurt myself by not getting the assistance that I so desperately needed. You desperately needed it. And you also, it's interesting. It's like you were judging your yourself and judging others Uh huh. all in one. At the same time. At the same time. So you were like, I am a hard worker. Uh-huh. I am not lazy. I am doing all the things that I need to do to support my family and all these other people who were on food stamps are X, Y, and Z. And I'm not going to be coupled with that. I refused to acknowledge the fact that our society had let us down. We weren't getting paid enough. We didn't have enough help. Um, And so instead, I was a good little worker bee. And also, you know, we'll couple that with the fact that you were in your early 20s. Dumb as shit. Dumb as shit. And like, I guess at your early 20s, you only know what you know. Well, I also wanted everybody else to think that I was a successful parent. To me, being on food stamps meant that I was failing in some way. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't, but I needed to prove to myself, to the world, to my family, to whomever that I was capable of doing this thing and I was capable of doing it all by myself, like a fucking hero. Here's my cape. You know, I could sit here at 40 and say like, oh my gosh, like this tender 22 year old, you deserved so much more. You should have given yourself those liberties. But as your little sister at the time, if you had chosen to be on food stamps, I can't say that I wouldn't have judged you in that moment. Yeah, I'm sure that I would have totally. And so you were protecting yourself from that like condemnation. A hundred, hundred million gazillion percent. I was so afraid of the judgment that Mm -hmm. I was going to get from being on food stamps that I basically was shooting myself in the foot. Right. And I think that a lot of people out there do that. They're so afraid of the judgment that they're going to get that they shoot themselves in the foot to save face. Totally. What's it? What is it? You, you cut off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. Cut off your nose to spite your face. Definitely. All of those things. Yeah. Um, so where do you feel like in your 24, three, whatever year old self that you were finally able to come around and release? Do you feel like it was a cognitive awareness of like releasing that judgment? Or do you think it was like out of just pure situational circumstances? I was desperate. Yeah. I just got to a point where I was, you know what it was actually? And I, 
am happy to say, like, my ex at the time, well, still my ex. <laughs> he's, he's still, he's still ex. a super ex. <laughs> but he was on food stamps and he was telling me, he was like, oh, I went to the grocery store and I got this, this, and that for the boys. And, da, da, da. and I was like, oh, like, that's, that's okay. I, I could do that too. And I was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> But you know what? That just goes back to what we had talked about before, like the social mimicry. Yeah. It goes back to the environment because maybe he was brought up in an environment where it was like, that's okay. If you need help, it's okay to reach out and ask for help. But we were brought up in an environment where it was like, you will not be on food stamps. You will not rely on the government. You are an appage. You are a hard worker. You have a work ethic. You will get it done by yourself. I can't even tell you how many times I heard like, you are an appage. You are meant to work. Yeah. Yeah. And that was ingrained in us because I mean, like all hardworking families, from the beginning of when we stole land from the indigenous people. <laughs> from the beginning of time. Yeah, not quite. But um, that was, everybody had to be a hard worker. Sure. It wasn't ever like an easy thing that you got to do. You were a hard fucking worker. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, and, and with my ex and his family like she was always showing up to the soup kitchen and serving people and totally fine with that and I think that that was the example that he saw mm -hmm. and so for him he was like no 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 people are offering help this is great you should take you the just help show up people give it to you watch yeah. for free <laughs> you get blowjobs or nothing they just give it to you, <laughs> you were... and I was like shit man you don't gotta give a blowjob you were so being God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an average. I got to work hard. I got to work hard no matter what. <laughs> yeah, but um, that that was something that switched in my life that I was like, oh, and then I started to see that a lot of people really needed this help. And I mm -hmm. became so much less judgmental over it because we should be helping people that need it. Definitely. And our society isn't built for every single person to thrive. Right. There, We are built for the top 2% to thrive. And then, you know, the top 50% to do okay. And then it goes down from there. So right. not everybody is in those brackets. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to fucking do with uh how hard they work or how deserving they are yeah there yeah. are a lot of people that deserve it and work their asses off every day and still don't make that bracket and that is a country fail not yeah. a them fail totally 100 percent. you know i'm a strong believer in that the things that you judge the most harshly mm -hmm. are the things that you will be given an opportunity to experience or see the other side totally and I feel like I've had lots of opportunities in my life like that to be able to see the other side of something because I've judged them way too harshly that is a beautiful life lesson that I think we all go through mm -hmm. um there will be things from my teen years or what that you judge so harshly and you know what it's actually not funny haha -ha, but funny ironic there is a teenage girl in my life right now that I have been observing mm -hmm. um and she is very judgmental of a lot of things mm -hmm. and I want to hug her so hard because I know that, oh, girl, it's coming. Like, the lesson is a common the for you. The lessons are coming. When you can see somebody, like, so stuck in judgment. And I feel like something that goes, like, hand in hand with judgment also is gossip. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like those who judge people openly and harshly also have a tendency to gossip. And so it kind of... Um, puts all of your judgments out there on the table. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you do that or when you express a strong opinion about something in a negative way that 
you can almost guarantee that you're going to have an opportunity to like walk in those shoes for lack of better words. And it's hard not to sometimes, right? Like we were talking earlier about how we judge the people closest to us Mm -hmm. the most harshly. Right. And it's like, I mean, my husband, I love you so, so much. I am so judgmental of the way you handle shit. I know, me too. (laughs) And on one hand, I'm like, ah, why does it got to be like this? And on the other hand, I'm like, oh, shit, there's definitely a lesson in there. There is some sort of shadow that I am staring at that is staring back at me that I need to fucking grapple with. Definitely. Um, When I was doing like some research for this week's episode and just kind of doing like my own digging internally, like what are the things that I judge the most harshly? And, you know, I could easily like jot down some things just in general of people that I find myself repetitively or maybe things that I've overcome in the past that I have been judgmental on. But the thing that I realized that was like the easiest, like the shit just came flying out of my pen. I kick it old school. I write everything. Nothing goes on a computer or in a phone. I write it down. I'd rather write too than put it on my phone. And so when I'm writing it, it was like, as soon as I started thinking about the things that I judge my husband for, it was like word vomit all over the page. It Eminem, was like, freestyle rap. It was all it was coming just, out. It was flowing. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. just coming right out. However, um, coincidence or not, um, I also realize I'm in this phase right now of my life where I'm just realizing how much my husband just holds the mirror up for me Mm. of the shit that I am avoiding within myself. Everything that I point the finger at him for, I feel like just just point the finger and he just holds up that mirror and it's just me looking at me pointing at myself. Yeah. And that sucks because when I'm pointing my finger at him, I truly in my heart of hearts believe that it's him that is wrong and him that is fucking up and has nothing to do with me. Okay, but wait, sometimes it is, right? Sometimes? It we- depends on what reality you live in. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's really all a reflection of self. Mm. I'm sorry. It feels yucky. I know. I don't like It feels that. much better to judge and blame them. So much easier. It's very easy. And I think that's why people are so judgmental. Right. Is that... Um, it is much easier to look at somebody and say, oh my God, you are fucking up. You are doing it wrong. Then it is to take the time and the energy to be like, okay, why might they be making this choice? What are the circumstances? What am I not seeing? What is behind it? That takes too much energy. Right. It's like trying to find the empathy, the understanding, the compassion, like how much more thought and effort do you have to put into that versus like just coming up with a quick opinion and spouting off the mouth about it. Oh, you're to this. Oh, you're to that. And how often have you now be honest here? How many times off the top of your head can you think of where you've made a snap judgment that you immediately were like, uh, like karma slapped you back and was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time, of course. Um, I was actually just having a conversation with you about um, a mom at school that I didn't necessarily, I made an assumption about a judgment, we'll say. Yeah. And it was like, um, she just kind of keeps to herself. Yeah. And I'm sure she thinks I just kind of keep to myself. But And this is such a simple example, but it's like I came up with these ideas on my own that had nothing to do with her or my interaction with her. But when I gave it a chance and I was thoughtful and understanding and and offered connection and relationship was like I got to see a whole different side of this person that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Isn't it funny how that happens? I know. I'm like, (laughs) how much of myself was I was like, oh, she's standoffish and closed off and doesn't want anybody to approach her. 
Hello, fingers pointing back at myself. I'm closed off and standoffish and don't want people interacting with me. Hello. Well, it's funny that you say that because I, and as you know, and as our listeners even know at this point, 32 episodes later, um, I'm always like, I really want connection. I really miss friendships. I really miss blah, 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 blah. But then I'm standing at school drop-off or pickup, and I'm like, fucking in my zone. I got one friend that I talk to. Nobody else fucking look at me. What you, mm, nope. I'm sorry. My face is buried in my phone right now because <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. I am a lone wolf. I <laughs> I am a lone wolf. (laughs) Yes, it's so true. It's so true. It's so easy to just like get in the the space of like everybody leave me alone. So speaking of judgment, can I tell you one of the big reasons that I'm like, oh, I'm a lone wolf. Yes, please do. Because people are so judgy. Okay, so. This might be an unpopular opinion, yeah. but I think that if you feel like people are really judgmental, it's because you're really judgmental. <laughs> I mean, maybe. So, okay. I actually challenged myself over the last couple of days. I knew that this episode was coming up and I wanted to see how often I was like snap judgmental about something, a situation, okay. something that was going on. I challenge our listeners and apologies in advance you're gonna hate yourself um (laughs) (laughs) offer yourself grace please give yourself a lot of grace but once you start paying attention to how often you are a judgy bitch it is alarming (laughs) You know, I won't disagree with you. I think that the thing that I'm almost like embarrassed to say and like scared of it to say is that like, I feel like just like easygoing outward judgments of like the casual everyday thing. I feel like I've kind of worked through that. Yeah. But the people that are close to me, I'm sorry. I judge the shit out of you. It's okay. It's it, it's going to happen. I think it's a very natural human thing that we have said in the beginning. It is. It's right. a natural right. thing to do. Um, a couple of things that I had snap judgments on. Uh-huh. Uh, one, somebody's driving immediately i was like what the fuck are you doing you stupid idiot how have you made it this far through life okay so you're dave and the car (laughs) and i'm like babe you don't understand maybe they're in a hurry or maybe they have somewhere to go or maybe they were looking at their phone see i go to that afterwards right right but but the the initial reaction (laughs) i start in my judgment shoes sure i got some real judgy boots on you were like well on your way through it though i'm I'm trying (laughs) i am trying um, another thing is, uh, I, I, re- and this is just off the top of my head from experiences that I can recall that I can, you know, spit out during this episode. I recall chaperoning my daughter for a field trip and seeing the lunches that other kids brought. And I was Guilty. like, who the fuck gave this kid a Snickers bar and a bag of fucking chips for lunch? Like I was in my judgy boots full fledged Mm -hmm. i was filling out those judgy boots yes yes i'm definitely fully standing in my judgy boots when it comes to that i am the worst it it was and then i had to be like you know what dana shut the fuck up he's eating he's it's a special day maybe he got a special lunch for a special day maybe he earned it for i don't know he cured cancer and now he's giving himself cancer with his <laughs> his Snickers it's and his, his red Snickers. Gatorade. Yeah. You know, I also, you know, in my stance of really firmly believing that all judgments are rooted in the shadow. Yeah. Um, I also like when I'm making, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, <laughs> when I'm making my kids <laughs> lunches, I have like a rhetoric going in my head like about what a good mother I am and they're gonna see what a healthy lunch I packed for my kids and they're gonna know how loved my children are listen <laughs> I do that <laughs> when I pack lunches in my head I'm like the teacher's gonna see this and she's gonna be like bravo Mrs. Pereira <laughs> 
the same way. I'm like, did you see that my daughter had wild caught salmon with capers and lemon butter sauce? Oh, see, I'm not that bougie. I'm like, you got a PB and J, but strawberries and a banana. Wait a minute, you send your kids to school with peanut butter? Yeah. Is that not like the most? I feel so judged right now. <laughs> heinous thing you can do have you not considered peanut allergies i mean i have and i just think that they're not gonna stick their face in my kid's sandwich i thought it was like illegal to send your kids to school with peanuts. No, that's just a your bougie ass school <laughs> My school is not bougie at all, but Shay does have a friend that is allergic to peanuts in her class. So that sounds terrible. Yeah, they have sun butter sandwiches at school. <laughs> well, okay, so I do. I did have a situation when Joss was in preschool that there was a child that was allergic to peanuts, and we did not send peanut stuff. Right. However. <laughs> so- <laughs> the peanut thing is such an easy target. So uh, immediately I stopped sending peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because how inconsiderate of me. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> Dave and I oftentimes have talk about the PB and J situation. Yeah. Right. And he's like, it's not like there were less peanut allergies when I was a kid. You know, like you just knew if you had a peanut allergy and you didn't eat anybody's didn't eat food. Fucking peanuts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So here's the thing. I am a rule follower. So if the school told me you're not allowed to send anything peanut butter, peanut related anything, then I would be like, OK, and I wouldn't do it. Sure. Um, But they did not give me that rule. So, so my daughter gets peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Well, at you, Mrs. Pereira. Mm must really love your children for sending them to school with that balanced lunch. (laughs) It's peanut butter, sugary jelly. (laughs) But uh, there's a banana. (laughs) There is a banana in that box. Did you catch the banana? And I feel good about that banana. So another reason that people are judgmental is because they overcame something And now they get to judge all of the people like losing weight. Somebody that has decided, oh, I'm going to, you know, like somebody that's lost 40 pounds because they changed their eating styles. Now they're like, fuck you in your diet Coke. Fuck you in your chips. Fuck you in your that. You're not doing it right. And it gives them they now feel like they have the right to be um, judgmental about things. Right. Or I, like almost empowered, right, by their choices. I accomplished this thing, so now I am the the ruler or the judger of. Yes, yeah. If I'm able to do it, then everybody's able to do it. Right, right. And something that I recognize, and apologies, not that any of these people are listening to our podcast because they hate me, um, <laughs> but <laughs> apologies uh, to the people that I judged so harshly for smoking. Mm. Whenever I quit smoking, I was like the fucking judge on it. You know what? You actually really came down hard on me. Did I? Oh, my gosh. I will never forget this. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I completely forgot it. Please tell me. Um, I was probably like in my... Was it after dad died? No, it was before dad died. But he had cancer? He had cancer. Okay. And I I was living with Katie, uh-huh. do you remember? Yeah. In um, University Heights. And I think I maybe just started dating, dating Dave or right before I was dating Dave. And I had lit a cigarette. And you were like, how dare you even yeah. consider smoking a cigarette? Your father has lung cancer. Yeah. And I was like... <gasps> Oh my god, I'm the worst human ever. <laughs> I was a judgy fucking bitch about. It. I was so judgy. The pain that I felt over our father having cancer turned me into like I was the fucking queen of judging people for smoking. Sure. And it was awful and I feel 
bad about it now. People get to make their own choices. They get to make their own life choices. Is smoking good for you? Fuck no, it's not. That's, I mean, there's science behind all of that. Yeah, but there's a million things that aren't good for you that we all do. I drink alcohol. Not good for you. Not good for you. Mm -hmm. I eat Doritos. Not fucking good for you. That red dye 40 will get you. It'll fucking get you. There are so many things that I do in my life. I put my mouth over an exhaust pipe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you put your mouth over? <laughs> Where's this show going? There's so many different ways we could have taken <laughs> that. But the fact of the matter is I do a lot of things that aren't good for me. Do I think that somebody deserves to judge me because they don't do those things? No, I don't. But it took me a long time to get to that point. And it took me a lot of judging myself to realize, oh, no, 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 that is not my job. It is not my job to control other people. My uh, controlling somebody isn't security in my own life. Right, right. It's almost like um, you, you almost feel like some sort of safety or um, security within yourself if you also make everybody else believe what you believe. Yeah, which is huge problem. In like the validation, US. right? Yeah. Validation of like your own self belief. Totally. And so, anyways, apologies if if anybody is still friends with Tamara Adams. Go ahead and send it to her because she fucking deleted me. Did you me. super judge her over smoking? I said something about smoking on Facebook, and she was <laughs> over my shit immediately. Sorry, Tamara. Sorry, Tamara. <laughs> um, yeah, she was over my shit. Rightfully so. Sure. She should have been over my shit. I had no right to be judging her. She's like, my lungs, my choice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So my bad sorry sorry yeah. all right so I had texted you earlier today and I was kind of like it would be interesting because we talk about um like the social mimicry right yeah and like how your judgments can also not just come from your own experiences or your own shadow but your environment mm -hmm. and so I was thinking it would be interesting to know like the things that you judge most harsh harshly on others and the things that I judge most harshly on others and see if two of us who came from the same environment, for the most part, yeah, um, have some similarities there. Yeah. What do you think about that? Are you willing to put yourself on blast? Well, I'm, I, I totally am willing to put myself on blast. I'm trying to think of some of the things that I judge most harshly. I think that... Um, like the the health things like not I'm not as much with food as you are right um but I do think like smoking drugs alcohol stuff like that that I'm pretty I could be pretty judgy on it's interesting that you say alcohol is one of the things that you're judgy on because you are like a indulger in that department I do like to drink but I also know um like I'm not a a firm drinker like right, if I like want to alcoholic yeah like if I need if I want to take time off I'm like oh, or if I'm like oh my fucking kidneys hurt then you know I'm done drinking right right um yeah I think that um health in all things I think that I naturally have a tendency to be very controlled in that area and when we were talking before and you had mentioned the thing about like oh somebody who had lost weight or um something that was like connected to something that they overcome or overcame and it kind of triggered this like little like eight to 12 year old self of mine. And I was like, wait a minute, maybe the reason I am so judgy and hard on people is because I had like this little fat stage. Oh, totally. When I was a kid, yeah. and I was very harshly judged for that. Like I was, I had little nicknames and the worst nicknames <laughs> were so nicknames terrible when I was a kid. Yeah. Like we won't go into them, but I had these nicknames and these things that kind of carried with me. And I think that that was like my own self judgment that I kind of became very controlled around food, around health, around um, like my relationship with food. And I think that that's kind of like where all of my judgment of others when it comes to food is kind of born. And yeah, like, oh, that's a tough one for me. I'm so embarrassed to admit that one, but it's it's honest. I, I, I mean, not that I'm not 
judgy, but whenever it comes to my children and the things that I felt judged about whenever I was their age, I am very careful. There's almost a reverse judgment situation going on there where I try and back off so much Mm -hmm. that um, other people judge me for it. Ah, interesting. Like what? Like, um, for example, uh, I know that uh, the boy's dad doesn't think I'm hard enough on the boys. Mm -hmm. Same with my husband. He does not think I'm hard enough on the boys. I should be uh, really laying into them and putting down the law. Tough. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, I don't feel like I need to do that. I I honestly feel like I do a fucking good job. My kids are pretty great. Um, are there times where they take advantage of me? Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then I have to lay down the law, and then I'm pissed off about it. Yeah, you don't want to. It's like makes you act out of alignment with yourself. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, one of the things that um, the boy's dad didn't like is that um one of my sons needed to go to the dermatologist because he had acne Mm -hmm. i wasn't a huge fan of pointing out his acne i was like he's a teenager who has hormones pumping through him right now if he's bothered by it he'll tell me he's bothered by it and then we'll do something about it right but i'm not going to be the one that points it out and is like you have to fucking take care of that you're fucking gross you need to clean yourself more you need to do this you need to I just refuse to do it. Right. Um, Well, that's interesting to me because knowing you and knowing their dad, I know that you both had acne as kids growing up and you both handled it two very different ways. Yes. And so that was something that I wasn't trying to make a thing in their life. Like call attention to. And he did. And I was like, all right, well, if that is something that bothers you so much, then you get to handle it. You get to handle the doctor's appointments. You get to take them to all of it. You get to like, you do all of the things for it Mm -hmm. because it does not bother me that much. Mm -hmm. And it clearly wasn't bothering my son that much because he wasn't saying anything about it. Two appointments he took him to. And then he got busy and it all fell off. So where do you think that that like, I got judgy. Oh, did you? I got judgy. I was like, oh, how did I know? Two appointments and now you're fucking busy. Like, I got real fucking judgy about it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He is busy. Uh, He has a lot of shit going on. But I almost got judgy because he got judgy. I was like, oh, yeah, you're going to be judgy. Now I'm going to be judgy. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't help situations. Mm -hmm. That's not great. So are you hard on yourself whenever you drop the ball or like whenever you have – multiple things going on and you can't follow through with something oh i don't drop the ball Mm -hmm. i fucking refuse to drop the ball Mm -hmm. because that is not an option (laughs) because my because apaches don't drop the ball apaches don't drop the ball we work hard Yeah, no, I don't allow myself that because that is what was instilled in us. We don't drop the ball. We take care of everything. Right. Right. Um, That one, I think, fell loose on me. That one did not adhere to me. No. I mean, I think think that I probably at some point in my life felt that way and was like really hard on myself about it. But eventually it was like I had so many balls in the air. Something had to drop. You know, and I got I, real comfortable with dropping balls. <laughs> I'm I'm less so these days mm-hmm. because what's the fucking point? Right. Life is life. You got to roll with the punches. Totally. Down to the tomatoes and up to the pineapples. That's the way we do it yeah. these days. That's right. Uh, one of the other things that I noticed that I was very judgy about is materialism. Mm. People who over, in my opinion, of course, overvalue material possessions yeah i'm super judgy about okay and i'm like what are you trying this is the internal what are you trying to dialect in my head what are you overcompensating for what are you trying to prove why are you fulfilling yourself with material possessions i will judge a dude in a sports car for sure (laughs) i do think that maybe your penis is two inches maybe 
it, it could be two inches of pleasure. I don't know. But I, I do see that. But I also remember growing up, and maybe this is where it comes from, it was like, if you didn't wear Abercrombie and Fitch. Ooh, Abercrombie and Fitch. You had to wear Abercrombie and Fitch. Then you were nothing. Mm-mm. And I had no money. So I couldn't buy Abercrombie and Fitch because their sweaters were like $50. That was a lot. We were more like the Charlotte Russe kind of budget. <laughs> so we had to go into Abercrombie and Fitch. And we had to tear a tiny little hole in, in the, the side shirt. of the sweater. And then pull it over the tag that would make the alarms go bing bang boom (laughs) and i stole i think i think that the statute of limitations is up (laughs) fingers crossed if not abercrombie and fitch this is a made-up story allegedly allegedly (laughs) in 1994 (laughs) i stole stuff from your store (laughs) <laughs> several hundred dollars <laughs> but not past ten thousand dollars because that is grand theft and i did not do that certainly didn't at 16 years old absolutely not no um well there was a level of wanting to prove thyself there was a based statue, on what like you a war yeah 100 percent. and and i think as like a young kid and i'm sure kids this is like this is not new we didn't invent this we weren't the first to experience we aren't the last to experience now it's lululemon now it's lululemon right right there will always be like that something that you're trying to live up to way more expensive than abercrombie and fitch mind you i know way more i don't even buy myself lululemon i cannot afford (laughs) i buy amazon (laughs) i'm like oh that looks like lululemon yeah that's a knockoff i'll just put a sweater over it nobody will ever know (laughs) Okay, so we've gone over all of the things that make us judgy bitches. What are the things that can help us stop being so judgy? What can, like, interrupt being a judgy bitch? I mean, even just the research for this episode was eye-opening enough for me to realize that all of the shit that I'm judging people on is coming indirectly from the shadow parts of myself yeah i really like i don't know that anybody could convince could convince me any other way that i am passing a judgment that doesn't somehow have to relate to myself and me being a harsh inner critic yeah i think that one thing that can help people be a little less judgy is instead of judging the person as a whole sure judging just the action that or 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 just acknowledging the action it was the action that you're judging not the person as a whole so this is kind of like when my kid is like you hate me you don't love me and i'm like no i do love you but i don't love the choice that you made yes like that that is exactly (laughs) like that and also because it makes you recognize like i myself i think i'm a pretty good person do i make shitty decisions sometimes do i make mistakes absolutely so if you're gonna judge me judge me because sometimes i make shitty choices not because i'm beautiful right (laughs) <laughs> you are beautiful thanks yeah you are you are judge me because i say stupid shit like that yeah you know like yeah. judge the action not the person as a whole right or the way they look yeah because on the whole <laughs> i'm pretty great so my husband tells me but um <laughs> she set herself up for that one <laughs> <laughs> um so i think another way to um kind of like put the pause on judgment um would be to kind of check yourself and see like is this judgment coming from a place of like my moral compass yeah. like is this an overall judgment of like good and bad right and wrong or is this like a personal judgment again coming from some part of you that maybe you feel ashamed or um, insecure about okay so i can see that now the difference here is there are some people whose morals are different values i suppose are different from other people but i think that we can all agree that murdering the people is bad Mm -hmm. and so if you're judging somebody because they murdered somebody then yay it's probably an okay judgment to make right right and i think that 
right like violence right of course it's a bad it's bad we judge you yeah it's judging eyes right upon and you. it's okay also to you know check within yourself and say like yes i'm judging this action that this i am person judging took. the academy for not nominating margot robbie or greta Gerwig. anyways <laughs> proceed <laughs> and so Whenever you are passing judgment or you notice that you're passing judgment, that could be like a quick self check-in, yeah. right? Like, am I judging this person? Am I saying that this is a bad person because of some internal um, idea of self? Or am I judging this action based on morality? Like yeah. This is being good or this is being bad. Um, so I think that like, Something that would be judged on internal self could be like, I don't know. Um, we were talking about embellishing before. Mm-hmm. Oh, this person said that they had like, you know, two drinks and were hammered, but I saw them. They had four. They lied. Right. You know, like that's a, you know, whatever. That's a, a small potatoes. Yes. But if we're talking about somebody who is lying and it's hurting people or being violent or deceptive or like those are different that's like a whole different ball of wax that's a moral measuring stick exactly yeah i agree with that um i think my favorite thing is empathy trying to put yourself into somebody's shoes i think that we already said that it's very easy to pass judgment make it a little harder for yourself give yourself a little challenge By showing a little empathy, trying to understand where somebody might be coming from, uh, situations that they might be in instead of rushing to a snap judgment, um, I think that's a a good way to kind of interrupt it and just show a little more compassion. Yeah, I agree. And then on those moments that you're noticing that you are making a snap judgment and you are looking for ways to express empathy, understanding, compassion. Um, I know I keep going back to it, but like offer it to that person and then offer it to yourself because I really feel like you need that also. We need to do a shadow episode. It's we really definitely a, a mirror. It is something that is being held up to yourself. If you are noticing that you're judging a lot, um, yeah, it's it's probably something that you need to look inside for. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, guys, I know that we just had a whole episode on not judging people, but I would love it if you could go to Apple and judge us with like five stars, preferably. Mm-hmm. Um, and like write out a little thing like the five star review is really nice. We actually got two new five star reviews. Yay us. So thank you guys uh, that went and actually listened to us and did the review. Um, well, the the rating and the review, because that's what we need. So go ahead and, and go to Apple and judge us, will you? Yeah. And that'll help us all become less judgy. Yeah. Judgy bitches. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. It was lovely spending another Thursday with you. Mm. Until next time. We're on batting, baby. Unbatting, unbatting, we're unbatting, baby. We're on a journey, baby. We're unbatting, baby. We're unbatting.